So the next step that we need to make is to put together the client template. And this is what the JavaScript will hydrate with the data that comes back from the server. So instead of making you painstakingly watch me type and <laughs> mostly get wrong when I'm typing, let's go ahead and paste in this, this uh, client template and we'll go through each piece of it. So here it is, the, from div tag to div tag is our client template. So the ID is details, we'll use that in the JavaScript to, to chase after it. So we're initially hiding this from the user by using our, our style sheet entry of none. You'll notice we have an empty, seemingly empty anchor tag here, and that's because we'll be ass assigning the href uh, attribute programmatically. And so all we need is the ID here, for that stands for title, and that's when inside the h2 tag, so it'll give it a nice, big, bold, header-like look. So we declare a table, it's all standard stuff. In the first row, we're gonna show the author, and then we just give an ID to the table cell here, which we can use, again, JavaScript to fill its contents. We do the same thing for publish date and price, and that basically is our client template. Well, now that we've got the client template in, let's go ahead and put it to use with some JavaScript. So let's come up to the top of the page and open up a script block. I'm just gonna bring some code that I have uh, set aside over in here, and we'll discuss it. So the first piece that we have is the, the cell change function itself. So during our activation, we set up um, a pointer over to the cell change function. So when we change active cells, this will run. So the first thing that we're doing, we're finding on the page our data grid. Once we have an instance of that, then we can go and get the behaviors. From the behaviors, we can get the activation behavior. And then from that, we can get to the active cell. Now this follows the same path. If you look at the, the markup for our grid, you have the grid itself, you have behaviors, you have activation, and then we, uh, we bring it down into the cell change. But it's basically the, the same path that you have when you, when you build up your markup. So once we have an instance of the active cell, we can call the get row method and then we get to the row. Now the reason we need this is because from the row, we'll be able to get its index. And from that, we can do a get with our B for book and the index to get the, the span that has our, our ID in it. So calling inner HTML returns to us the primary key of our book. Now, one of the things that we're doing, you'll see this little expression here, we're checking to make sure that the row that we're looking at doesn't equal the last row. Basically, as you click on rows in the grid, if you click on the same row, this function will fire, and we wanna make sure that we're only calling back to the server when we've actually made a change. So in this line here, we set aside the row into the last row variable so that we can make this check. And so this only runs if we're in fact changing rows because you could change cells within the rows, but really all we want to make sure at this point is that we're changing rows. So then we have page methods, which is ASP.NET Ajax um, notation for calling um, static methods on, on our code behind. So we'll have to turn on page methods in our script manager and we'll do that in a second, but from there, we can call the get details function passing in our ID and then giving pointers over to where to run the success and fail methods. So let's go ahead and bring those functions in. If we have a successful return of data from the server, it'll run this, this function. And the first thing that we'll do is, is get the details and set the display equal to block. Now, if you remember, that's our client template and we have it set up right now is this class applied to it saying display none. So that's gonna switch that on so people can see it. And then we're going to get our title. And this is the anchor tag that we have there, and we're gonna do a couple things with it. In the inner HTML, we'll take the, the title data that comes from our JSON object coming in through the response argument here, and add that as the inner HTML. And then we'll also take the URL and put that in the href. And then we're just gonna grab the author, the pub date, and the price. If you remember, these were table cells, and so we're getting them via JavaScript and then taking them out of our, our data here. Lastly, if uh, something goes wrong, we have this function that's run on fail. And obviously, <laughs> this is not something that you would do in real life. But for the purposes of our demo, we're just gonna alert out that something bad had happened. You might wanna try and get people to try it again. You may try another Ajax call to log the error. Um, there's a number of different things that you could do. But for our purposes right now, we're simply going to alert out that many things, many bad things have happened. So we do need to turn on page methods in the script manager. So we'll say enable page methods 
and set that equal to true. And so we're left with one last task. Let's go into the code behind and we need to create our page method. So we need to bring in a using statement of system.web.webservices or services actually. And what this using statement does is it brings into scope the ability to get to our attribute for web method. So we'll apply a web method to a uh, public static method. And this is going to return a book. And we're calling this method getDetails. From there, we're passing in the ID. And we can simply return, uh, look at the uh, book repository, grab the instance of it, and get by ID and ID. Now, get by ID is just basically building up an object and sending it with the right properties. It's, it's just mocking out test data at this point. But what's interesting here is that we're returning up a book object. So uh, it's getting serialized and sent up as a JSON object so we can deal with it um, as that, uh, that type of an object, having these properties here. So that should be everything that we need. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So here's our grid, and we should be able to click through each row. And as the rows change, either clicking on them or pressing the tab key using the web grid's activation behavior, it makes the Ajax call and brings up our details. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this tutorial and it helps you build solutions just like these. Thanks a lot for checking it out, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you soon. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.